Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hello, Facebook family and friends. What a joy to be able to welcome you today to this wonderful broadcast. You know, it's always a joy to serve you the grace of God to teach you the word of God. Remember, this season we are on with Riot Live and the Counselor every day. Teaching and teaching, bringing clarity to God's word. You must remember that every time we study the word of God, the intent is to equip you so that you can also equip others. Brother Paul said to Timothy, the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same, commit to faithful men who shall in turn commit to others. The word of God is going to come with so much power. Revelation knowledge is going to come, you know, to you through the teaching of God's word on this broadcast. And every day, the word comes twice on this platform. 12 noon GMT plus 1 and 10 p.m. GMT plus 1 every day right here on Facebook. Except when we go live each evening at 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. And I'm so excited because we're examining very critical subjects of the scripture, doctrinal exegesis, bringing clarity and equipping you in the knowledge of Christ. Just before we get in the service of today, I want to also mention, if you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no Christ-centered church where you can attend church, two things are very important. Number one, God doesn't want you to be in isolation. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship, where you're able to learn with other brethren, and beyond learning, where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. You're denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today. Dr. Abel Damina, tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. Fasting your seat bells right now as I take you into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy day. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which are God. So your spirit and your body is sealed until the day when mortality puts on immortality. Sin cannot break the seal. Individual mistakes cannot break the seal. Persecution cannot break the seal. Nakedness cannot break the seal. Hunger cannot break the seal. Famine cannot break the seal. I am fully persuaded that nothing in this life, nor in the life to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. Where are you in Christ? What keeps you there? The love of God. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in New Christian Camp Meeting 2021 and Ask the Counselor with Michael Bush. Theme in Christ Realities. Ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 31st January to 14th February 2021. Time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo, Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo, Excel FM 106.9 Uyo, Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Uyo, Unoyo FM 100.7 Uyo, and Heritage FM 
7.30 and also live on Sundays, 7.30 a.m. first service and 10.30 a.m. second service. Venue, Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Oyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. You can also watch these programs live on Kingdom Live Network TV on your strong decoder or my TV decoder. You can also follow Abel Damino's Facebook page, Public Figure, as well as YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram handles to watch real time. Host, Drs. Abel and Rachel Damino. The Father and His Family Alright, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse number 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Next verse. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Next verse. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? That's very instructive. Who do you say? You've been with me. You've been around me. You've seen me. We've spent time together. Who do you say that I am? And for the first time, that was a day to take into account or that was a day to check out their perception of Jesus. Next verse. And Simon Peter answered and said... Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Next verse. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood had not revealed. If your Bible was mine, that's a good place to underline. For flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Jesus is a revelation. We saw from the scriptures that you can never know God until the Son reveals him to you. And you can never know the Son until the Father reveals the Son to you. So both Jesus and the Father are a revelation. He said to Simon Bajona, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. There's a difference between identification and imitation. We don't imitate God. We are identified with God. We are in union with God. Inseparable union with God. We are not imitators. We are in identification. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 29. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed. Now that to be is not in the original. So for whom he did for know, he also did predestinate, conform to the image of his son. That's where we are. We are already conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That he may be the firstborn, that means he will be the model, or he will be the prototype of all the sons that will be born in the kingdom. So we don't imitate God. We are actually exactly like him. We identify with him in what Christ has already done. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22. But be it doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Deceiving your own selves is the word paralegizomai. It means acting beside yourself or pretending to be who you are not. Paralagizomai, deceiving your own selves. Look at the next verse now to see what, how he is acting beside himself. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, this is why he says you are acting beside yourself. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Next verse. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. That is why he is acting beside himself. He forgot what manner of man he was. But of course you know that even if he forgot what manner of man he was, he is still that man. The fact that he forgot didn't change him from being who he was. It's just in his understanding and in his mind there is a wrong image of who he is. In his understanding and in his mind he is acting contrary to who he is. 
Okay? So this man did not change, but in his mind, he has a wrong picture because he has forgotten what manner of man he was. So because he has forgotten what manner of man he was, he now begins to imitate. He begins to imitate who he already is. So Jesus never taught imitation. Never. As many as receive him to them, gave you power to become, to become. You are not an imitator. You are born of God. You are begotten of God. Begotten again unto a lively hope. You are born again, born anew, not with corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Now look at the book of John chapter 14 verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Now look at John chapter 16 verse 30. Now are we sure that thou knoweth all things? And needeth not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Now what did Jesus do that made them believe that he came from God? The previous verse 29. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no parable. That is, you are no more speaking to us in parable. You are now speaking plainly. By this we now know that you came from God. Now if you observe John chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, actually we call it faith classes. Faith classes. Now why did Jesus have to say this? In John chapter 14 verse 1, he says, don't be agitated. Let not your heart be troubled. Because Jesus knew something was going to happen to them experientially. So he didn't mention what they have to do. He only said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Why did he say that? Let's backtrack. John 13, 36. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither thou goest, or whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. You cannot follow me to where I'm going now, but you will follow me afterwards. And that's why he now says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare the place, I will take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, first of all, he said to them, I'm going somewhere, but you cannot come with me. Afterwards, when I'm gone, I will take you with me. He was dealing with the reality of the new creation that was going to be their reality within a short while. So now, please pay attention. In John 13, 37, Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? Why can I not follow? That is Peter speaking in the flesh. After Jesus has explained, I'm going somewhere you cannot follow me now. He says, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. The man is in the flesh. The man is being sentimental. I will die for you. Jesus doesn't want you to die for him. If your death will have been of any value, he wouldn't have to come and die. You will have died for all of us. He came to die in our place because that was the mission of his love for mankind. John 16, 33. So what Jesus was saying is, I will die for you and when I have done it, whatever I will do by reason of my death will be credited to your account. My death will become yours. That where I am, there you may be also. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In me you have peace. So let not your heart be troubled. Look at that John chapter 14 again, verse number 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. And many people thought this verse is talking about the rapture. You know, and uh, they are thinking that there is a mansion somewhere, there is a building somewhere, there is a construction site somewhere going on. But the word house there is the word oikia in the Greek, O-I-K-I-A. Oikia, it means household. Of course, we know that Jesus is too intelligent to think that there are mansions in a house. 
We know better than that. Now, so, so that word oikia is the same word that was used when Jesus said, I will build my church. I will build my church. It's taken from a Hebrew word, bayath. Bayath. Jesus took that word from the Old Testament. Look at where that word is applied in the Old Testament, bayath. Genesis 24 verse 7. The Lord God of heaven which took me from my father's house. Bayath. From my father's house. Look at another application of that word in Genesis 46, 31. And Joseph said unto his brethren and unto his father's house, unto his father's house, Bayath. Unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh and say unto him, My brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come unto me. So, in my father's house is in my father's household. In other words, in my father's family. In my father's family. You will see the word household, again using Acts chapter 7 verse 20. In which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house. In his father's house, Bayath or Oikia in the Greek. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. Glory to God. But fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Now, Brother Paul was saying something earlier before he entered verse 19. Look at verse 18, the pretext of that. He says, for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We both, Jew and Gentile, have access by the spirit unto the Father. So now, in verse 19 of the same Ephesians chapter 2, you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of their household of God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Look at verse 21 now. In whom all the building fitly framed together, all the building fitly framed together, groweth all unto an holy temple in the Lord. All of the household becomes a holy temple in the Lord. So, this household is now a building or a temple. Look at it. Go back to verse 20 for pretext so that there's clarity. Verse 20. Now, follow the reading. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. 21 now. In whom all the building, we are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. In whom all the building, all of us put together, are the building. We are the household of God. We are God's house. The building, fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. So the family has people who are habitations. In my father's household. Believe in my father. Believe also in me. Where I go... I will go alone. Then after I am gone, you will follow me. I go, you can't come now. But where I'm going, afterward, you will come. Please, that's very important. Afterward, you will come. The word mansions is the Greek word mone, M-O-N-E. So, in my father's household is a people. Household is a people of in my father's family are many mansions and he says believe believe in god believe also in me observe the word believe in john's account there were four synoptic accounts of jesus 33 and a half years on earth all right by matthew by mark by luke by john but john has a unique account that always stands out. Brother John has a unique account that always stands out. John tells you why he wrote the synoptic. In John chapter 20 verse 31. The reason for the writing of the synoptic. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. The son of God. And that believing 
you might have life through his name. And that believing, you might have life through his name. So the synoptics are written so you can believe that Jesus is the son of God. It shows that these things were written for us. They were written for us. Take note. Then look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe. You have already believed by reading the four accounts. So now the epistles are written to you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Why? That you may know that you have eternal life. The gospels are written that you may believe. The epistles are written that you may know that you already have eternal life. All right? History has it that Brother John wrote the synoptic, the book of John, the gospel of John, the same week he wrote the epistle of John. And that is why there is similarity in the use of language in John and in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. It shows you that the believer has a different message from the unbeliever. The unbeliever's message is to believe. The believer's message is to know. So, the faithful today is not for us to have faith, but for us to know what we already have. To the unbeliever, believe. John 1.12 but as many as believe him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Now, please pay attention. There is faith for healing and there is faith for miracles different from faith for salvation. You can believe for healing, you can believe for miracles, but you are not saved. Faith for salvation is faith in the sacrificial work of Christ. Faith in the sacrificial work of Christ. Death, burial, resurrection. You can believe for healing. You can believe for miracles. But you are not born again. So faith for healing is not the same with faith in Christ. Faith for healing is not the same with faith in Christ. Now all the three accounts use the word believer or believest or believe 37 times. The epistles use those three words 90 times. But John alone used those words 94 times. John alone. However, if you read the epistles, the word believe is always used in the past tense. The word believe is always used in the past tense. Because the people in the epistles are already believers. They are already believers. Unbelievers don't read epistles. Unbelievers hear the gospels. Believers hear the epistles because the epistles is their diet so they know what they already have. So John had more things about what Jesus did than the other writers of the four gospels. Now let's get back to John chapter 14 again. Jesus is having his last public lecture before he died. John chapter 14. 14, 15, 16 are the last public lecture of Jesus before he died. Because John chapter 17 was his high priestly prayer before death. So John 14, 15, 16, we call them faith lessons. Now Jesus is having his last public lecture. And he says... In my father's household, there are many places. There are many places. Let's go back again. John 14 from verse 2 and 3. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Mm. There are two things there, two words that have relationship but mean different things. Let's look at a couple of things that were said about Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power 
to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 18. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He had declared him. Now, but in his resurrection, if you observe, before resurrection, he was called the only begotten Son. Only begotten Son. Only begotten Son. After he rose from the dead, look at the way he is called in Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. After resurrection, he is the firstborn among many brethren. Before he died, he is the only begotten son. The only begotten son. Many brethren. What did he tell them? I go to prepare a place. And when I prepare the place, I will take you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That going, what was it? He became the firstborn among many brethren. Among. Not outside. Uh, that where I am, there you may be also. He became the firstborn among many brethren. So, when he says, I go to prepare a place, what was he talking about? Huh? Okay. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I prepare the place, I will come back and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So, where was he going to go and prepare that place? Then I read for you Romans 8.29. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Then I said to you, before he died, he was the only begotten son. When he rose from the dead, he is the first begotten among many brethren. He is the firstborn among, not beside, not afar from, among many brethren. Watch, that where I am, there you may be also. After I go, I go to prepare a place. After preparing the place, you and me will be together. Before he died, only begotten son. When he rose from the dead, first begotten among many brethren. So the question is, where did he go when he went to prepare the place? When he died and rose from the dead. So the going was his death. The going was his burial. The going was his resurrection. That was the going. Now that's important. That's why I took time to emphasize that. That was the going. Now, please pay attention to this. He couldn't have been talking about family if he was alone. As long as he was the only begotten he couldn't have been talking about family. So, what he was saying was that the father's family is about to be birthed. The father's family is about to be birthed. I go to prepare a place for you. When I do, I will come back and receive you to myself. That where I am, Dear, you may be also. And he is the first begotten among many, many, many brethren. Hebrews 2.10 For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect. How? Through suffering. So he brought many sons unto glory. He brought many sons unto glory through suffering. What he brought to glory was many sons. No more the only. Many sons. 
Firstborn is the Greek word proton, P-R-O-T-O-N-E. It's not for ranking. It's for order of emergence. Proton, first begotten. That means Jesus will emerge the first begotten. Then by his emergence, others will be born. If we say he became the first among equals, born of God, that means he came first. That's why I said, I will go. Then you will follow after. He told Peter that. I will go. Then you will follow after. Then Peter said, me too, I will go with you. In fact, I will die for you. Peter was speaking in the flesh. I will go with you. I will die for you. So now he became the first protone. John 14, 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The truth is this. We have stayed too long in the truth about the forgiveness of sins. So, we've got to go beyond forgiveness of sins and look at how we are now a family. We are now a family. Remember where we read, you are no longer strangers. You are no longer strangers. You are members of the household of God. We were forgiven. Then we were born. He forgave us and gave birth to us. While we were yet sinners, he died and forgave. Then he birthed us as a family. He didn't burn us with anger. He didn't say idiots. With all the way you have behaved, you are not even happy that I have decided to carry you people like that. No. He forgave us all. Then with his good pleasure, out of a satisfactory heart, God was so happy and excited when he gave birth to us. The Bible says he gave birth to us out of his good pleasure. We are born as a delight to God. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 again. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We have access. We are not coming to the Father. We have come again. We have come again. Father, we have come again. From where? We are not coming. We came. The day we got born again. We came and we never left. That access is unconditional. That access is unrestricted. We have access constantly into the Father. Because we are united with the Father. It's not a coming again. We have access. We are no more strangers. We are no more foreigners. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Break every chain. Break every chain. We are not mad men of Gadara. We are born again people. We are in Christ. The son has set us free. We are free indeed. There's no more chain to break. Glory to God. Glory to God. I am going higher. Yes, I am. I am going higher someday. Going with Jesus to stay. So where are you now? I am going above the shadows. Above the shadows with shadow. Human shadow or, or, or bed shadow. Into the presence of God. Where are you now? All those songs were written in unbelief. They are songs of unbelief. We are marching to Zion. Zion, we are come to Mount Zion. We are not marching to Zion. We are in Zion right now. We are the family of God. Glory to God. We are the family of God. He lives in us. We live in him. We are together. Where he is, we are by virtue of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. We are no longer strangers. Such songs are an offense. Such songs are a Satan. Satan, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou savorest not the things that be of God. A song that does not savor the things that be of God, that song is a Satan. Satan doesn't mean Satan. It, even though it is Satan, one who opposes. 
to oppose the teaching of God's word. God's word say we are no longer strangers. We are no longer foreigners. And then you are singing more of you, more of you. From where? You are no longer a stranger. You are the household of God. You have the totality of God living on your inside. Any song that robs you of your reality in Christ is a Satan. And any prayer that robs you of your reality in Christ is a Satan. It's like a man of God say, God will visit you. Visit? How can the person living inside me be visiting me? That statement is a Satan. Get it behind me, Satan. Glory to God. Something that makes me come into your presence. Something that makes me. We know what is making you. Ignorance. You don't come, you live there. I will live in you. Praise God. The only prayer is for you to have revelation. To know that you are God's habitation. So we need a revival of good thinking. To know not to pray for revival. You can't be alive to God and uh, be looking for revival. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. You are the household of God. We are family with God. John chapter 14 verse 2 again. I go to prepare a place. Means that we are not traveling in a queue. I go to prepare a place for you. The word prepare is the word hitomazo in the Greek. H-E-T-O-I-M-A-Z-O. There are two words actually. There is kataskuzo in the Greek. K-A-T-A-S-K-E-U-Z-O. Kataskuzo is external work. External. Hitomazo is internal. Now the word he uses there to prepare is hitomazo. Internal preparation. Internal preparation. He now says, I will come and receive you unto myself. It means that the fellow takes you into the same room. I will come and receive you to myself after the internal work is finished. It means the fellow receives you to himself. It takes you to the same room. It means it's not an external work. It's an internal work. So I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am... There you may be also. Remember the house is not a place. The house are persons. So in the family, we will have a father and his sons. That place that is preparing will be in the son or in the father. Remember again, in my father's family... There are many mansions. Money. There are many mansions. Money. A place to stay. John 14.10. Same context. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. Question. Where was the Father dwelling? In Jesus. So Jesus is the father's dwelling. Jesus is the father's dwelling. Or Jesus is the father's residence. The father that dwelleth in me. Pay attention. Look at it again. I speak not of myself. But the father that dwelleth in me. He doeth. The works. He doeth the works. Now look at verse 23. Let's see what the mansions are. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. 
and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. My father and I, we will come into him and make him our residence. We will come into him and make him our house. Now, he says, he will keep my word. That keeping my word is everything he has been saying in that chapter. So the abode is not where we go to. The abode is what comes to us. The abode is what comes to us. I and my father will come to you and make our abode with you. So the abode is what comes to us. I go to prepare a place. When I do, I will come. I will come. So the abode is what comes to us. Jesus makes a place in us for the Father. So the mansion is the provision of the Father dwelling in his Son. He abides in us. Look at Exodus 15.2. Even Moses was the first to talk about what I'm teaching here. Moses back in Exodus. The Lord is my strength and my song. He is become my salvation. He is my God. Did you observe, honey? I will prepare him an habitation. My father's God and I will exalt him. I will prepare him an habitation. So Moses knew that God does not dwell in temples. He already knew that ahead of time. Habitation is the same word translated money. Mansions. Mansions means habitations. Same word for money. Look at Exodus 29, 45. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. Moses knew very well that God's plan is to live inside people. Moses knew from the beginning that the plan and the dream of God is that one day he will live inside his people. He will live in us. And for that dream to come to pass, Jesus had to go. And in going, he prepared. And after he prepared, him and the father came inside to make their abode. Oh, glory to God. Then I'd like you to take note of this also. That the reason why Moses now will have to begin to build physical temples was because the people were in unbelief. God never told them to build him any temple. God never did. God has never asked for a temple physical construction like this physical building here. God has never asked for it. The reason why we have this physical building is so that we can have a convenient place to come and study the word of God. To come and worship. That's the reason for this physical structure here. God was going to build that temple himself. John chapter 2 verse 19. Jesus was in Solomon's temple. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple. He's inside the temple of Solomon. Some of you don't know what the temple of Solomon was like. Let me explain so that you can appreciate. The entire life of King David, he kept saving money for that temple. All the wealth of Israel, David saved it for many years to build that temple. He died without building the temple and transferred the wealth to Solomon. So the wealth of David plus the wealth of Solomon was used in building that temple. It took them 45 years with enough material on ground to build. Not 45 years because material finished. Then they had to look for money to gather material before they continue. Then they suspended the project for three years to continue again. Uh -uh. There was enough material and mobilization. Yet, for the technicalities of the temple, it took them 45 years to build. Now, Jesus is inside that temple. Kabadaga. He's inside that temple. And as far as Jesus is concerned, he's inside a hall. 
They are in a temple. He is in a hall. Then he now says to them, destroy this temple. This one. And in three days, I will raise it up. What? This man must be having a psychiatric problem. Destroy which temple? Which temple are you talking about? Look at verse 20. See the way they reason when he said that. They said the Jews, 40 and 6 years was this temple in building. And will thou rear it up in three days? They're angry now. Will they? And in, in Israel, don't touch their temple. Though. They can kill you alive. Kill you alive. Okay, next verse. But he spake of the temple of his body. That is to say, this thing is not the temple. This is the temple. Glory to God. We don't come to his presence. We come with his presence. We are the carriers of the presence. When we move, the presence is moving. Oh, glory to God. And wherever the presence of God is, there is fullness of joy. So you are, you, you are a container of joy. Wherever you are found, there should be rejoicing. When you enter a place where there is depression, your presence should cast out depression. Somebody shout, I house God. You are the container of that, that presence. You are the carrier of God's presence. You are God's temple. Now look at verse 22. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Destroy this temple. I raise it up in three days. Only three days. Death, burial, and resurrection. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. So you understand what, what I just explained. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? Next verse. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Next verse. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are Glory to God. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. Call yourself what God calls you. Let your mind be fixed on what God calls you. I am the temple of God. I am the house of God and he is able to keep me from falling. I am his house. He preserves me. I am his house. He protects me. Let me ask all of you a question. The house where you live, who maintains it? Does the house maintain itself? The house where you live, who protects it? Who, who protects it? The house where you live, who cleans it? The house where you live, who furnishes it? Is it you or the house? If the house is dirty, who is insulted? The house or the owner? If you go to a house and everything is dirty, what will you say? You say, see this foolish man. Or see this stupid woman. How can you have a fine house where everywhere is dirty? You insult the owner because it is the owner's responsibility to keep the house clean. And it is the owner's responsibility to make sure armed robbers don't break into the house. And it is the owner's responsibility to make sure nobody comes in to push him out and take over the house. Even house that you rented, it is not your house. When your rent expire and you don't have money to pay, to leave the house is a prayer point. The landlord will say, you must park, you must park. Then you refuse. He will get police. Then you will tell the police, okay, after one week. Then he will go to court, get court injunction. You will beg court for two months. It's not your house, but to live is a prayer point. Is it the house that Jesus bought that Satan will push him out? What are you talking about here? You are the house. You are the temple. And let me tell you the truth. It is Jesus that maintains his house. You don't maintain yourself. He maintains you. You don't protect yourself. He protects you. You don't keep yourself. He keeps you. You don't furnish yourself. He furnishes you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Stand on your feet and shout glory. Say with me, I am what God says I am. I am light. I am righteous. I am Christ. 
You didn't say it well. I am Christ. I believe. I didn't hear powerful amen. Know ye not. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. What fellowship has light with darkness? You are light. What fellowship has the temple of idols with the temple of the living God? I will live in you. I will walk in you. I will be your God. You will be my sons and daughters. Sickness has no right to your body. The owner of your body is the healer. You didn't hear what I just said. Sickness has no right into your body. The one living in the body is the healer of the universe. But Rakatana, you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your spirit and in your body which are God. Say with me, my body is healthy and strong. Say my body is healthy and strong. Now shout it very loud. The healing power of God flows through my body. I am a member of the father's family. He dwells in me. He dwells in me. I don't go to him. He has come to me. And he will live in me forever. How long will he live in you? Oh, you didn't say it well. How long will he live in you? He says I will live in you forever. And many Christians want to go to heaven. We want to go to heaven. When the owner of heaven say it is inside you, I want to stay forever. The believer has not yet understood God's investment inside you. Heaven at last. My prayer, somebody called me and said, my prayer for you is that after all this labor, you will make heaven at last. My target is not heaven. My target is Christ. And he lives in me. And wherever Christ is, that is where heaven is. Heaven is Jesus. So anywhere Jesus enters becomes heaven. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah. You are God's heaven. He lives in you. He dwells in you. You are his habitation. And I have news for you. He will not live in you for five years. He will live in you forever. And he will never leave nor forsake you. Where he is, you are. Where you are, he is. What did Jesus say? After I prepare the place, I will come to you that where I am, there you may be. Hallelujah. He lives in you today. Can somebody give the Lord the greatest shout in this building? Glory! You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which are God. So your spirit and your body is sealed until the day when mortality puts on immortality. Sin cannot break the seal. Individual mistakes cannot break the seal. Persecution cannot break the seal. Nakedness cannot break the seal. Hunger cannot break the seal. Famine cannot break the seal. I am fully persuaded that nothing in this life, nor in the life to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. Where are you? In Christ. What keeps you there? The love of God. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in New Christian Camp Meeting 2021 and Ask the Counselor with Michael Bush. Theme in Christ Realities. Ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 31st January to 14th February 2021. Time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo, Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo, Excel FM 106.9 Uyo, Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Uyo, Unio FM 100.7 Uyo, and Heritage FM 104.9 and also live on Sundays 7.30 a.m. first service and 10.30 a.m. second service Venue, Power City International Number 98 Wangibo Road Uyo, Aquaibom State Nigeria. You can also watch this programs live on Kingdom Live Network TV on your strong decoder or my TV decoder. You can also follow Abel Damino's Facebook page, public figure, as well as YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram handles to watch real time. Host Doctors Abel. 
and Rachel Daminer. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a service, what a word. I believe you've been impacted, affected with the word of his grace. Listen very carefully. It is God's intent for you to continue walking in this light. So I'm going to encourage you to keep following. Remember, every day, we're live right here on Facebook and YouTube every day. 12 noon GMT plus 1, 10 p.m. GMT plus 1. And in this season where we're in the midst of a program, Riot Live and Ask the Counselor, you can also be a part of the meetings every evening, 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. Now, listen carefully. If you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no Christ-centered church where you can attend church, two things are very important. Number one, God doesn't want you to be in isolation. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship, where you're able to learn with other brethren and beyond learning, where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. You're denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina. Tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. It's such a joy to be able to serve you the grace of God. My prayer for you is that the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light, that the reality of Christ will resonate in your mind. We rebuke sickness, disease, oppression. We come against whatever is not planted by God in your heart today. We command it rooted out. And Father, we thank you for miracles, healings, and testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen to your victory station.